Hey guys, and welcome back to Drunk Commentary, where we're still watching season two of The Boys. And so far, season two has been a barrel of excitement between, you know, nothing has, nothing huge has happened, you know, nothing huge has happened. Like, we haven't seen a lot of characters die, there hasn't been any huge battles or anything. But I mean, the emotional stakes are all there. We see Butcher finally told the rest of the boys that uh, his wife is alive. Which is really exciting. Kamiko found her brother. The Deep had this kind of emotional catharsis leading to him finally accepting his body despite the fact that it's not traditionally beautiful and um, a lot of stuff like that. And we met this new character called Stormfront who is much more open about like the corruption of Voight and much more open about just wanting to do the job as opposed to being you know like the kind of corporate puppet the rest of the void has been so it's been a very emotional start to the season and very very grounded so in the last episode we saw gecko give starlight a sample of compound v which we don't fully know what's going to happen with the sample of compound v because i think the original plan was to give that to rayner but that doesn't exist anymore so i don't know what they're going to do with that but I feel like that's a little Chekhov's gun that's being introduced really early. And yeah, Butcher reached out to Mallory and has a deal that Mallory will find his wife if he um, figures out what's going on with who killed Rainer. And we also found uh, Kimiko's brother, which is really exciting. But anyways, we're going to jump into episode three, and I have really, really high expectations and high hopes for this season because we're really starting to dig into it a lot further, and, you know, I'm loving the direction it's headed in so far. So we're going to get into episode three called Over the Hill with the Swords of a Thousand Men. Are you guys sulking on a boat? Also, <laughs> I lost me bottle a little bit. I don't fully understand what what uh, Huey's complaining that much about. Uh, this is kind of way more interesting than his usual day to day life. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, this guy does speak a language, though. Can you not like bring an interpreter over or something? There, there's a way to handle this. Also, who's picking out Frenchie's wardrobe? So at this point, I have to assume that he's picking out his own shirts. Like she, he's being a jerk. I mean, you hit her first. Who hits her sister? Like, come on. There's multiple reasons why not to do that. I mean, hey, right. I'm not going to mock an eight-year-old's ability to speak Spanish, finish. but... Or you want to come outside. KVO accelerates, but Homelander laser blasts out the I like how the Maserati emblem is very evident when you're watching this. Holy shit. This guy is self-flagellating a little bit too much. That is the moment. Zimmer. Why is translucent in the opening the picture? Seven. Shouldn't if you're going to do an origin of the seven movie, shouldn't it involve like lamplighter or like before yeah. translucent? And fuck, I don't want to jinx this, but maybe lamplighter isn't it? Maybe, maybe that's the this. guy on the far left. The, the world loves Hamilton. Oh my god, do you think he'll do? Okay, yeah. What are we? Are you um, even in the movie? What are we? What are we thinking? Oh, um. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, he has to start charring up for Rick more often. Um. Man, she has okay. to chill. Okay, I got a few more headlines. My God, she's such a squid. Like, grow her back, though. Come on. Superheroes. Um, not entirely true, but sure, he'll give it to you, Adrian. You know, not to not to not to ruin the emotional argument of this, but in the real world, my mom said it was a gift. I don't think lobsters would have the intellectual ability to beg for their lives, um, because in the whole, way. you know, species family tree, lobsters but are basically wasn't. like ants. Especially if they are not carefully guided through the process. Oh, black noir. So far, Vought has refused to release. Starlight did mostly. Pretty sure, but I, just I, I kind of agree with MM, like, but why? Like, what the fuck's the point? Like, it exposed Voight, Vought, but I mean, um, why? The fucking kid. It's finally fucking going down. The kid did it, and nice one. Why would you assume Vought's going down? 
It's just a PR storm. You can't even give me this, can you? Yeah. Like, I think they're being insane to think this is gonna sink Vought. Like, they're not going down because of this. Don't worry about it. Is he gonna get him to jump off a building? I kind of feel like Homelander's kid is going to end up being like an Omega level mutant in a sense that like he's not going to have like traditional powers, but he's going to have like extremely powerful powers. I feel like he's going to throw him off the roof. <laughs> oh, I called it. Well, there we go. Obviously with powers. Can he not just get there? Like, is he tied down? Oh yeah, I forgot. He's telekinetic. He can he can move it over. Mm, circus. Maybe this is what we've been waiting for. Who goes to circus? Circus. Like, I'm not here to like trash talk like casinos, but I mean, circus circus has not been popular in a very long time. It's like mildly popular in Vegas, but I mean, it's not the Bellagio. I'll call you back. Are already dead. You don't know that. We have to try. Chewie. Put Chewie on this. How do you know they're dead? There's some the water. We die too. Like, it's a helicopter crash, like, 40 feet above water. They're probably fine. Holy Ooh. shit. Plot Ooh. twist. Alistair Donna, the, the leader. You have been ready all along. Now get <laughs> That's unequivocally here. not true. Not, not to bring logic into this, but trading would be halted well yeah, before this. He's, he's gonna kill himself, but then Billy Joel steps up. Oh, wow. <laughs> they they give stop, credit to that to Billy Joel. Something. That's interesting. And now I, I feel like I'm... What the deep fuck was that? The hell was that? The deep. Absolutely deep. If it's anyone except the deep, then I'm very surprised. Is he gonna start shooting whales arbitrarily? I love how this makes the deep relevant again, just because they're on the water. <laughs> I'm with them. Are they trying to drive at him? I don't know if he has like Aquaman super strength, but it seems like a bad idea. Oh, good murder whale. Yeah, that's how I would be feeling if I was in this situation. You all right? Come on. I was gonna say, it's no time to acknowledge his nonsense. Just drag him out of here. I like Emma. Mm -hmm. He's one of my favorite characters. Probably. Really? Sure. <laughs> yeah, that means nothing. <laughs> You're good. Man, Atrian is like more than useless this season. Like, the fact that he can barely move like 10 steps. I think this is the first time in the entire series where like, all the main characters have basically been at one spot. Can't Homelander see through walls? I'd like you to do something for me, okay? He's gonna ask her to kill him. Kill him. Called it. Wait. And he's, she's not gonna kill him. This is the biggest fucking misdirect I've ever seen Boy, in my life. Cunt. <laughs> Holy cow, this is a random car. Man, they get, these guys have to stop breaking people's houses for no reason. What the hell? Why did that guy get thrown out a window? Yeah, 
Man, this guy's been watching too many Matrix movies. Oh, that's painful. Can't do your magic little hand thingy anymore. Help. Oh, he's dying this episode, isn't he? Well, that was pretty hardcore. Well, I think we've confirmed now that Stormfront is absolutely just as evil as the rest of them. I want to, like, I want to say that I hate Stormfront now, but the way I feel, like, it's just like, she's just a better version of Homelander. She's literally just as political, but she's just better at it, you know? Madeline Stillwell. But sadly, that's so smart to pin it all on someone who's dead. Everyone at uh, so smart. And prayers to those family. This is being such a like grounded episode. And that's what I love about the series, how like how real the action is. It's, might be the best superhero series that exists right now. I absolutely love Stormfront's character. Episode. Guys, so I absolutely, and by the way, I had no idea the episode was ending there. I just guessed because that just felt like where they were gonna end it. Anyways, I absolutely loved Stormfront in this episode. I feel like the like it's trying to make me hate her, but it does not succeed at making me hate her. It makes me love her so much more because she's just a version of Homelander who is basically just better at Homelander at everything. I mean, she understands that the objective, like what they're trying to do is they're trying to be political. They're trying to also be superheroes and she understands the objective. She's just so much better at playing that game. Like she absolutely killed it. I mean, she killed Kamiko's brother. And you know, I like Kamiko. I don't want her brother to die in that sense, but in the whole character motivation phase, I fully understand what she did in this episode. And she, as a character, I absolutely love her. I'm fully expecting in the next couple episodes them to expose her as like a huge villain and make me like, as a villain, hate her, but as a character, she's just so good. Anyways, this was a huge episode. This moved the season way forward and we can really see where they're trying to go here. Holy cow, so. The new character, Stormfront, is basically better at Homelander in every way Homelander could exist. She's better at being a superhero, she's better at like, committing villains, and she just kills like Homelander without remorse. She doesn't care. And I'm not sure if that was hinted at all in, se in episode one. I don't think it was. I think this is absolutely like an episode three kind of reveal that she is absolutely just as dark as Homelander. She doesn't care about killing. Um, she's totally open to that whole dark aspect that Vought Industries has been perpetuating. But the fact that she does it the way she does is so, you know, kind of, Im it's impressive in a way um, that no one really sees it coming. And I mean, I didn't really see it coming the whole way leading up to it. But anyways, this has been a huge episode of the series. We've like gotten a lot of development, especially with Stormfront's character. In terms of the main group, I mean, you know, they were trying to do something. It didn't work out. <laughs> kind of a null plot point for them, if I'm being honest, which is just like they tried to do something. Didn't work out. They tried to do it in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the ocean. Um, and there are some legal reasons for why that might be logical. But really, that was just an excuse to bring the deep back into the action. And I'm really expecting after this episode, the deep is going to be fully entrenched in the seven uh, as if uh, he never left. And that's just, you know, that's just my theory. But I'm really expecting this new member of the Seven, uh, Storm Stormfront, to really take center stage. And she's going to be the, like, huge driving force of this season. As for where the season is going, honestly don't know. Vought's been exposed to being using this uh, Compound V agent and it's really been exposed to, you know, they're manufacturing their own superheroes. And to be fair, the real thing is that the, the news hasn't realized, like, 
they're manufacturing superheroes, are they not also manufacturing supervillains? So I'm hoping to see that explored more in the subsequent episodes. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Thanks for watching, and um, yeah, let me know who your favorite superhero is, because right now, honestly, I think it might be Stormfront for me. Anyways, see you in the next episode. Till then, bye.